then that's kind of when I realized, okay, this is like a legitimate business, you mm-hmm. know, that there's like something here. And that's when I had to ramp up and learn about what garnering investment really meant and looked like. Okay. So you had revenue and you were like, okay, it's time to scale this. Yeah. Okay. I mean, lots in between, you know, like you're dying, doing everything. You're just like trying to figure everything out, go to trade shows, talk to people, learn about the food industry. We then moved from my apartment kitchen into a commercial kitchen and like started scaling the recipe. And then after that, you you have to figure out, oh, okay, we've kind of maxed our capacity here move it to a co-manufacturer and then figure out fulfillment and everything else. So so while doing that, I'm also realizing this is very expensive to start this type of business and I have to figure out what raising capital looks like and how that works. So how'd you go about it? So um, I heard about this book called Venture Deals by Brad Feld. Yeah. Brad Feld had a company that was very similar to Groupon, but basically when the Groupon it was like Feld's deals. It was something as obvious as that. Oh, yeah. Because we met Brad. I had a bow tie company and we launched on his company site, which was like a Groupon competitor at the time. Really? And yeah, it was all because of that book. Wait, the, did the book come first? The book came first. Okay. Yeah. But then he would spend time on the East Coast giving like certain seminars and stuff and talks around some of the, like the Boston school systems. He Even today, he's very vocal about like investment what it takes to start up a business. and So stuff. you read his book. So I read the book so that I understood what all these terms were. In the meantime, we were invited to join this kind of food incubator accelerator called Excel Foods at the time, based in New York. And they wanted to like invest, but I didn't want to take a full investment. So I gave them an exchange of equity for this participation in this accelerator so I could learn all Was these things. Was it like things. 7%? No, much less. Like, I think 2 to 3 and then so I did that, went through that whole program, and then they ended up inv- doing a bigger investment in us okay. down the line. In the meantime, I'm reading this whole Brad Feld thing, trying to get, like, understand the difference between a convertible note and equity raise and angel investment, et cetera. But then, you know, you kind of have to, like, know who to go to to raise money. So even though Excel Foods had invested, I was trying to figure out, like, where do you, where, where do you find these people? And that piece was really hard. So, and I almost like walked into some very predatory deals, but then I realized, okay, I don't really have a Rolodex of people. I just, like, I just don't who make these types of investments. So I started entering pitch competitions for startups and I chose them because I always, I I saw that on the, on the, the judges on most of these were VCs or, or angel investors themselves. And so I figured, you know, if I can get their attention, then at least they'll know about my company, even if I don't make like the top whatever. So I started entering ones based in LA and I ended up getting into this one called Women Founders Network. They had a pitch competition. We made the top 10 and the top 10 were given a pitch coach. And I was given this like amazing pitch coach who then helped me prepare on like a lot of subsequent pitches, national television, you know, appearances, et cetera. But she was like, savage when it came to like my deck and everything she would just basically whip me into shape how was that for you did it was it hard at first to to take that kind of feedback yes and no some things because like a founder is very attached like oh everyone needs to know this this like part of like this information that we're in these stores and that you know this is how we think about distribution and she's like no one cares and you have like five minutes to convey all this information you have to practice like every word matters like every word, every space in between each word. Your timing has to be, you know, on point, like, and we can't waste time. So she would literally record me, video record me, and then we would review any nervous tics I had, any filler words like, um, and then I would have to repeat that over and over again. But her techniques were so great. You know, I ended up winning first place in that. So that was like, not only did I get $20,000, but one of the judges was Jesse Draper of Halogen Ventures. It's um, a fun base here in LA. And so she ended up investing. And then I was like, okay, this like works. So then I entered, uh, there was a Tory Burch Foundation pitch for $100,000. We ended up taking home the 100K for that one. Cleaning and then, house. And then on that panel was Tony from Q-Ball, which is a fund out of Boston. He ended up investing. That's how I got my first set of investors. And then they introduced me to more people. 
But for someone who didn't ha- doesn't have a Rolodex, who doesn't know where like investors live or sit, this was a great way for anyone to just get in front of the right and the people. incubator didn't help you out with any of that? They didn't help you out they with like, structure? They did some. They did some. Okay. But also you have to realize like they're also a VC and they were just starting. So we were both learning and they introduced me to some people, but some panned out, some didn't. So I just like, I also knew like I had to learn this too on my own and not also also just rely on my investment fund to do that. When we went through Y Combinator and it was similar. There was a guy named Jeff and he's probably the most like charismatic person to give a speech ever. And mm-hmm. he's he's the guy everyone goes to when they're doing their deck. And not so not all the founders, as an example, are like from America. And so yeah. if there's one that has an accent, he'll say, your options are your teammates doing the pitch or you're going to a speech coach. And it was like, like, imagine hearing that about your, <laughs> about, black and white. About your baby. Yeah. And, and then you as the founder, if you had the accent, would be like, uh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And he'd be like, okay, here's the data on the, where the money flows if you have an accent. Here you go. And you would see literally the fact that like wow. if they couldn't really understand you, I mean, you were talking about 10% versus like 90%. I mean, it was staggering. And so he's like, this is up to you. This is your company. But if you want to fail then I would continue to do what you're doing. And like, yeah, go ahead, try to learn. Try to figure this out in the next three weeks. Because then not only are you trying to figure that out, but you're also spending all that time with a speech coach when you yeah. should be spending Focusing it on your, your company. Yeah. But arguably, right? Because yeah. it's like, it could be a $3 million decision. That's the reality. Like any seed stage at that at that point, two to four million is what they're getting. And so wild like that. And then of course you're getting I recorded. Mean, she was, her name's Lisa Elia. Shout out. I mean, she has her own media coaching company. But I think it's true. And I don't think that's really shared with founders a lot. You know, everyone wants to take a very supportive approach to your pitch or your content and your deck. And you just need someone to be ruthless, like sometimes. Yeah. Um, Especially when you're starting out, you don't need yes men. You need honest feedback because the public is is not going to be as kind. Yeah. I mean, she'd be kind about it, but she's like, you know, in her own way, she'd be like, no one cares. Right. It's not helping you to be kind at that stage. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to like, be in a place to receive that, right? Not take it personally. Yeah. Um, but that was good training to not take <laughs> the pitching part personally. Yeah. So like after you get, you know, it's, it's not like, oh, you just meet investors and it's all good. It's like, I did pitch maybe 70 or 80 times before I, I raised the series seed because it was just, so much of it is like, you're learning how to pitch. So you're, a lot of them are wasted meetings, yeah. but also you are figuring it out like, what is the narrative? What is the story? But then there's also a segment of people who just don't really understand what you're doing. You know, they think it's like Which is great. a novelty or yeah. like a gag gift or like they don't really get it. And-